As we've noted before, it is often the case that we actually can't compute the exact value of a series. We might be able to argue that it converges, but we don't know what it converges to. And so what we're usually interested in is coming up with some sort of estimate on the remainder. We might know that for whatever application we have, there's some uncertainty, and as long as we're less than that uncertainty, then we're going to be okay. So we want to know how many terms do I have to use so that I'm within the uncertainty, and what is the value that I'm going to approximate this sum by. So one of the nice things about an alternating series is that I have this really nice formula for what the remainder is. Indeed, if I let s be equal to the value of this alternating series, I know it converges to something, and I'm going to call that something s, even though I don't know what it is, then what we're going to do is we're going to let r, the remainder, the remainder being the difference between the actual value s and the nth approximation to it, the nth partial sum, and we get to compare it, the, the rn is simply less than the n plus one-th term. So this is really simple. It, the, the claim for what the remainder is, I just look at whatever the n plus one-th term is, it's going to be that value. And the intuition here comes from the same picture. Indeed, if I was going to think of my series as this, this thing that bounced around, there was my s1, there was my s2, there was my s3, there is my S4, and so on down the middle. Well, if I have my S line in the center, if I wanted to approximate my S by the value S4, and that was as far as I was going to go, and I wanted to know how wrong would I be, then we'd seen that if I added S4 and I added the next term, it would go over to some amount over here. That's where your S5 would lie and that this distance would be given by b5. So what we get is that if, if I'm going to use s4 as my approximation, that's the value I'm going to use, then the difference between s and s4 is some number less than the b5. Or in other words, in this case, my r4, the size of that, is going to be less than or equal to the value of b5. I always have to add 1. So here's a specific example where I've gone on and done a bunch of the computation ahead of time, where I have some series, and I want to be within 0.001 of the actual sum. Maybe that's enough for whatever my application might be. And what I want to be able to know is, first of all, what am I approximating this? What is my SN that I'm approximating? And second of all, am I sure that that thing that I'm approximating is indeed less than this value of 0.01? So what we know is that the magnitude of the Rn, the magnitude of the remainder, which is the difference between the actual sum of this series and my approximation, the S minus the Sn, we know that this is less than the value of Bn plus 1. And in this particular story, my Bn plus 1 is 1 divided by n plus 1, 2 to the power of n plus 1. And of course, I do indeed have to go off and check that this bn that I have, that it is positive, which it is, that it is decreasing, which it is, because the numerator is increasing, and that the limit's going to be zero, which it certainly is. So it is in the situation where an alternating series applies. So what I've done in my table over here is I've just plugged in a bunch of different values for n is equal to 1. I've gone off on the calculator and I've plugged in b of 1, b of 2, and so on. I'll, I'll just do b1 very quickly off the top of our heads. This is 1 divided by 1 times 2 to the power of 1, so 0 0.5. That's how I got this entry right here. But the rest of the terms I went and used my calculator for. And then I also went and computed what the Sn's were. And so this was just the sum of one term, sum of two terms, sum of three terms, going down to the sum of n different terms. All right, so how far do I actually have to look at my table? So it said estimate to within 0.001. So I look at the BNs, right? Those are going to be my estimates. Going along, down, 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 down. And right here, at this very bottom line, I finally got to enough. This is a number less than 0.001. This is less than 0.001. However, we remember that if I'm looking at my remainder, it's less than BN plus 1. So if it's B8, 
that's my value here, b8, that's less than 0 0.01, the n in that case is not going to be 8, it's going to be 7, it's going to be 1 less than it. So when I want to figure out what my sn is, s7 is what I really want to be interested in, and that's this value over here, the 0 0.405804, and so I am going to approximate this sum by the computation for S7, the 0 0.405804, and I know that that value, well, it may not be exactly the answer for the sum, it is within 0 0.01 of the sum. By the way, I could have just taken S8 as well. S of 8 would have been an even better approximation. I could have taken S10 or S a million or S a trillion. All those are going to be better approximations. But the point is that we only want to take as many as I actually have to bother computing. So in this case, if I only care about being less than 0 0.001, there's no point to go beyond S7 to figure out my approximation.